If we were left to our own demise, yeah, we'd probably be lost. But the fact is, a miracle can enter into our minds, and we do have this help. We do have the, the thought of God that is within our minds now. And this, this thought that we can shift our perception, which is, the, which is the, the greatest fear of the ego, that you can shift your, that you can change your mind. And a lot of people don't realize they have that power. A lot of people don't realize that they have the power to change their mind. And that's, that's a big thing. When I say to people, at least you know the difference, whether you keep choosing for fear or not, at least you know you have a choice. You know, there's an old say. there was not an old saying, but it was a book that wrote about, um, it was on fire when I laid down on it. I love this book. It was Robert Folgium, Roger Fol Robert Folgium, that's right. He wrote a bunch of books back in the 80s, I think it was. And this one, he said, in this particular story, it was about a man who, I've told this so many times, but it's so perfect. Man who went into his work every day and he'd sit at the lunch table with all the other employees and he'd go, oh, darn it, same old sandwich. And he'd always sit down, start his, his uh, conversation at the lunch table, same old sandwich. Finally, everybody got so tired of him saying the same thing. And they said, if, if you don't like the sandwich, why don't you ask the person who makes your sandwich to make you a different sandwich? And he goes, oh, I make my own sandwich. <laughs> you know? And I laugh, you know, it's so funny because it's all of us. We sit there complaining about this. I know people, I always hear the same thing. Same old problem, same old problem, same old problem. Well, we make our own lunch. We keep going down the same old road expecting a different result. What's the definition of insanity? We all know it, doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result. Doing the same thing, you can't do the same thing and expect a different result. But when you know you have a choice, I have a choice for love or fear. I have a choice to continue the inane thought that, and what you, what you made a great point, Taryn, what's happening right now? Organized religion is fall, for the first time on demise in this country, right? Nobody wants to go to it. Young people go, this doesn't make any sense. Well, you know what? That's great because We've been doing a lot of changing in our own minds. And I always say this. It's not that the kids are so smart. It's that you did a good job. Each and every one of us who are older have done a good job of changing our minds. The process of healing our perception, the process of no longer going down this ancient learning that really makes absolutely no sense. And we're beginning to change our consciousness. And because we are starting in the 60s, and even before, I'll, I'll give my parents some credit about that. You know, they've been changing. Their, we're, they're standing on our shoulders. So right now that they say, I don't like religion, good for them. I see what they're saying. I think if they picked up A Course in Miracles, they go, wow, this makes a lot of sense. But the Course does an interesting thing, which would irritate the heck out of young people today. It uses Christian thought. But here's the beauty of it in an entirely non-Christian way. It's a great mixture of Eastern, of Western terms in an Eastern thought. So to me, it was meant for this world, this society, this culture, to help lift us out, not to throw away Christianity, but to transform it, to replace it with the truth, to take these things like sin and uh, uh, salvation and penance and suffering and transform them so that they can be they can be enlightenment ideas to us. To take the idea of a miracle and not say it's out of your reach, but to say it's within your reach every day by your change of thought. Wow. Wow. Because most of us say, if I could just change my thinking, <laughs> that would be a miracle, right? And that's what it's saying here. Change your thought from fear to love through the power of the Holy Spirit. You've got a, you've got a mighty God, you've got a mighty helper, and you're a mighty spirit. If we would just get up every day and remember, I don't have to follow this path anymore. I don't have to make that same lunch yet again today. <laughs> Come on. You know, we do it. I see myself do it. I see the rut. You know, we're like driving. You get into a rut. You ever see had your wheel get in a rut? We used to drive. We used to live up on a hill up in Oregon. My parents, it was a gravel road. My dad spent so much time talking about re-graveling the road, getting all the neighbors to put in money to re-gravel the road. Why is that, do you think? Lots of rain, lots of snow, lots of ruts. That He was in a rut all the time. He just hated it. He'd be driving all, you know, the car. You, a tire gets in a rut. It's a mess, right? 
Can't, it's hard to get out of. It, and it can really throw your driving off. So he was always trying to clean up that rut. I see myself. I see when something happens, I start, I find myself easily falling down into that rut, whether it's a rut of anger, a rather a rut of justified attack, justified upset, because there's a lot of things in this world we can be justifiably angry about. But it's a rut. It's a rut that we are used to. It's a comfortable old rut. It's easy to get into, hard to get out of. And it's a rut that keeps us from our higher truth, it keeps us from our happiness and keeps us from the awareness of love. So when we find ourselves falling into that rut yet again, we need to bring ourselves back in alignment with the truth. God's will for me is, no, no, no. God's will for me is perfect happiness. No, no, no. God's will for me is perfect happiness. That is not denial. That is firm awareness of the truth. That's what we need to start doing for ourselves. That's a big step for us. And that's hard because we think, oh, this is doing nothing. Oh, no, it's doing a whole lot. It's doing a whole lot. Because you think it's nothing, I would say good. Because to me, that's when your ego's getting at you. And if your ego's saying this is nothing, go, oh, I, I think I'm on the right track now. <laughs> I'm on the right track now. This is what I need to do. God's will for me is perfect happiness. What does it say? Now, look, these two paragraphs, two and three, these two paragraphs tell you how terrible sin is and what we believe about sin. If sin is real, then punishment is just and cannot be escaped. This is what you said, Darren, eh? If we did something wrong, then we deserve it. We're awful. We're terrible. We're going to get punished, if not now, in the end, you know, some way. It says, uh, salvation thus cannot be purchased, but through suffering, okay? You'll get out of this thing but it's going to be, take a lot of pain and suffering. If sin is real, then happiness must be an illusion. How silly of you to believe that you deserve anything but pain and suffering. For they cannot both be true. You can't have suffering and happiness together. They don't work. Okay? They're mutually exclusive. The sinful warrant only death and pain, and it is this they ask for. What did I say earlier? I said the purpose of the world is to heal the Son of God. If you don't use it for that purpose, what do you buy into? The laws of violence and death. So what it's telling us is we've gotten into a rut a violence and death, believing it is our reality, and that's the world we get. But just as easily can we move out of it. And that's what the Course is constantly telling us, though it is, you are capable of going beyond this. You know why? Because God is mightier than the world. A miracle is more powerful than any illusion. And love is stronger than fear. So the sinful warrant only death and pain, and it is this they ask for, for they know it waits for them and will seek them out and find them Listen to this, somewhere, sometime, in some form, that evens the account they owe to God. <laughs> you know, bony fingers. That's they would escape him in their fear. And yet he will pursue, and they cannot escape. You know, I mean, that's, this, this should be, this is, you know, Vincent Price should be reading this. There you go, drama queen, you better believe it. If sin is real, salvation must be pain. Suffering and pain, pain is the cost of sin, and suffering can never be escaped if sin is real. Salvation must be feared, for it will kill, but slowly, taking everything away before it grants the welcome boon of death to its victims who are little more than bones before salvation is appeased. Isn't that dra dramatic? And I'm, not, I'm just reading it here, Steve, not making this stuff up. Its wrath is boundless, merciless, and wholly just. You know? And haven't we heard that? For all you've done, you must die. That's the God that the ancients believed. Why are we doing this now? You have a brain. You know? You have a mind that can understand myth, that can understand why people might have thought the things they thought. And you have a heart, from what the Course is saying, that affirms to you what really is the truth. It's time for you to experience that by how you feel. 